This is blowing my mind. What's that? It's like I'm sitting where you're sitting. The camera that I usually see. Yeah. It's like, it's like kind of messing with me. It's amazing what technology can do, right? Like this is the age of AI. You can be anywhere. You could even be in guys' background. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know. Yeah. Wild. I like that I'm invoking a little Mitch, Mitch Hedberg in there. How's uh, is lighting okay? Yeah, you look all right. Uh, what's up, everybody? Hello, Miss Franklin. She said, Miss Franklin, if you're nasty. <laughs> all right, everybody. So welcome in. Excited to have you. Uh, we'd love to just uh, make sure that our uh, audio video is working well. So if you just want to give us a little likes and shouts and let us know that everything is working good on your end, you can hear us okay. So I'm going to reveal a truth to you guys. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what the headlines say. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation is more or less similar every single time. And while we all like to uh, talk about money and our finances and try to figure out how to resolve it and solve all these problems as quickly as possible, the, the reality is, as I see it, Elon, you can invoke a different truth. Um, is that life is gonna give you swings this way or that way. There are gonna be periods in your life where money feels totally good, everything is hunky-dory. There's gonna be periods in your life where that's not true at all. So if you've come here to strictly try to control your circumstances, um, that's certainly not the promise of what we do, although we do guarantee transformation in some way, shape or form. And that could look different for everybody. And my, my feeling, my experience has been is as you transform your inner world, it tends to be that there is a reactionary positive, um, shift in the way that your reality shows up as well. Right? So we, if you change your inner world, your outer world is going to change. And so we really want to investigate when we look at anything here, when we say, hey, if you look at our headlines, it's always about mindset relationships and your career, right? And truth be told, it doesn't really matter if you focus on your mindset, your relationships or your career. If you focus on something that feels urgent for you, right? And urgency just means it's really important for you right now. And the reason we use a word like urgency to tell you, look at something that's urgent for you, because if it's not, you're going to have this really like a really soft approach to your transformation. You're not going to take it very seriously. You know, from time to time, people look at our programs and everyone's in a different financial place. I gather that. So for some people, it feels really inexpensive. For some people, it feels really expensive. And that's totally relative. And people say, well, why don't you give this for free? And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, Elon and I have families. Families eat. I don't know about your families, but our families like to eat. And they also enjoy having a roof over their head. That's number one. Uh, number two is we've spent a great deal of time in our lives, two decades, 40 years combined, 36 years combined of, of coaching people to uh, gain experience and wisdom in, in really critical areas of really the fundamentals of living life, which is like, how is human being developed? Can we uh, shift, transform, upgrade the articulation of a human being, meaning like where they live their life from? right? Can we renew that? Are you stuck? Is there a fixed way of being? Is there other ways you can be? And clearly, if you're doing transformational work, you know that no human being is fixed, no relationship is fixed, no financial situation is fixed. And there is a way to you can enact changes in your life, but it's not a measure of taking control of things, which is what I think often people imply or think is going to happen when they do transformational work. They're like, oh, I'm going to get control over everything. It's like, mm, no, because spiritual truth is more about surrendering to what is and then shifting that energy so that things can change. 
right? And we'll talk about some like universal truths here, fundamentals of what's really supporting you and how that works and, and why you can expect transformations. But to, to um, erring on the side of caution to say like, we know with certainty that you can absolutely do all these things. It doesn't work that way because your life path, it might serve you in this time in your life to face some financial hardship. So then there's certain lessons that you can extract from that or have challenging relationships or even be down on yourself or whatever it might be. And what we really want to focus on is not necessarily changing anything at all because life is life and Elon and I can't control your circumstances or what's happening to you. That's silly and crazy to even think that we could. However, what we want to look at is how do we take something that seems really like a challenge right now? May it be it's a challenge you've been facing for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And instead of opposing it and trying to change it, which really is just the energy of keeping it in place, trying to oppose something is like trench warfare. It's going nowhere. It's just two sides holding up this like, you know, old thing uh, up for a long time. And we really want to get to a state of surrender, which is ultimately what helps experiences move through. And so we want to shift our ability to see, hey, this is really challenging to what's the opportunity in this relaxing into it, starting to observe and, and look at it, letting that energy move through. And then normally, generally, almost, I mean, without exception, things change for people. But what changes and how it changes is anybody's guess. Usually the experience becomes better for people and the experience becomes better for people, sometimes not because their circumstances change, but in fact, because their perspective on when circumstances are changing or are unfolding differently, that's what changes and ultimately gives them a lot more ease in their lives. And so the last part here I want to say about, you know, why, why there's a cost associated with programs like this beyond food and shelter and, um, and, you know, leveraging our specialty is because if you don't put something at risk, right? Like it's like you put something at stake, you put something at stake for yourself. You just won't take it seriously. Like, you know, for 11 years, we've tried all sorts of free programs for people. People don't do anything with them. They don't take it seriously. You treat things free when they're free. Uh, you know, Elon and I have taken free programs. I treat them like they're free. It's like a psychological boundary. You're like, Oh, there's not a lot of value in that for me. You know, you just don't do anything with it. And there have been also, you know, the most we've ever paid for a coach was $13,500 a month for a coach. I'll let you deduce which one we extracted more value from, <laughs> you know, like the ones that were free or like really cheap. You know, we've all bought $97 courses. I have a bunch of them. They're just sitting on my digital bookshelf collecting dust. I don't do anything with them. But the ones that I, I, I put something at stake and I put something at risk that's the ones I do something with. And that's a really important distinction here is like, if you want to transform your life, something's got to be at stake. And that's why having urgency will point to where, where am I feeling this sense that something needs to change and I'm willing to put something at stake so that I can play the game and perform at my highest. And there's a reason that playoff basketball or football or anything else. If for those of you guys who are sport fans and you watch, you know, professional athletes play in the playoffs, they play a lot better than they do during the regular season. It is way more interesting to play, to watch, you know, playoff football or, or basketball. Why? There's a lot more at stake. People's performance change. Their, their awareness changes. They, they just go into a much higher articulation of their state of beingness, their awareness. And so they, you see magic happen during those periods of time. We want to notice those phenomenons and we want to start leveraging them, Right. So when it comes to your finances, or I said, these headlines are relevant because whether it's finances, career, business, health, whatever, like maybe it, you might be stuck in one of those areas of life. And for, for somebody else, like, you know, health is not, a, has never been a really challenging thing for Elon and, and myself. It's been something that we've uh, lovingly given to ourselves and adorned ourselves with, with a healthy lifestyle, whether it's food or movement or exercise or sport or whatever it might be. But there's other areas of our life where they are there are challenging where for you that might be like, I don't know why that's challenging at all for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the at the core of everything that I'm kind of pointing to here is that there's just places where whether mentally or through your own direct experience or energetically or through your awareness, your system at some point missed some kind of information that it needed to resolve something. We call this like your system trying to get a need met. And if you look at like things like finances that people generally really struggle with or a sector people really, really struggle with, they have, and Elon and I would say the same thing for us and uh, about certain areas of finance in our life, because look, we grew up immigrants in a family that was barely making $1,600 a month. 
I remember my mom had a calendar, you know, like one of these pieces of paper and a calendar, and she would write down on the day how much money we spent, whether it was like food shopping or something else, because at the end of the month, we needed to make sure we had enough money for rent. Right. So like everything was tabulated, calculated. Now, I don't remember, Elon, maybe you do any conversations about us being poor, not having enough. No, nothing like that. Nonetheless, these two children, smart as children are, had the perception that we couldn't have anything that we wanted at any time. It was always like, you know, some modulation that had to happen there about what what was and wasn't approved for for many, many years. Right. That that went on. So like that kind of like sits in the background. And that background is really the, the strategies and patterns that you perceived and you kind of lived and peered and had your life created through. And that's the programming that you have. And we've all been, been dealt whatever hand we've been dealt about that. And that is ultimately this like agitated frequency that kind of sits back here that is working 90, 95% of the time when you're not paying attention on, cre- on sending out these like vibrational waves, these frequencies that are creating circumstances that look a lot like your past over and over and over and over again. Now you can get really upset about that because you're like, I'm exhausted by dealing with this. And, or you, rather, you can realize that this rearticulation, this this coming at you again and again and again and again and again, these experiences is actually the intelligence of how this quantum field experience that we're all in is actually trying to reveal to you the lesson from this. It has to bring it to you the same way over and over again because you're not getting that, that need met yet. And so that 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 thing hasn't decoupled in your system. It's still fighting for something whether you like it or not it's still fighting for a reality through that perception that it believed was absolutely real and so it has to bring in that that thing over and over again for you to look at it from so many different perspectives to get that lesson okay and so what we really want to help you do by applying transformational work awareness energetic work and you know if you come work with us this is what we're going to help you do is we're going to look at these subconscious parts and we can't look at them by understanding them. We have to look at, look at them by experiencing them. Okay, we call that feel seeing, not looking seeing. Feel seeing, like your direct experience with that. There's a felt sense there that you have a constriction about money, about relationships, career, whatever it might be. And we want to get intimate with that experience, and we want to do practices. This is the, what we offer here: is do practices that help that part of you get the need met that it's been trying to get met by creating those experiences. So that requires a shift in perspective from your mind state that requires this decoupling and kind of like letting go from the conditioning that it knows really, really well. And then we really want to meet that energy system exactly where it is so that it can finally go like, ah, okay, somebody sees me. Somebody's here with me. Somebody's here to meet me. And I, and I really want to tell you like your inner world is just like what's happening out here. Oh, okay. Maybe I, I think I see. I am looking at that one. Thank you, bro. Elon's telling me I'm looking at the wrong camera. I probably put on the wrong camera. Let me try to change it real quick. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's the camera I wanted to use. Oh, there you go. Snappy, snappy. That's like why I have. A, that's why I have an older brother to keep to keep me on my toes. <laughs> uh, so, um, so we want to help you get that need met. Because the way that you transform where you are is by stopping the avoidance that most of us live in with that which we don't like. Like how many of you guys, just by you know saying I in the chat box, know that there's some area of your life that every time it comes up, your response is not like, yay, this is awesome. You're like, I don't want to have this experience anymore. How many of you guys have that experience? And regardless, again, of how many times you said, I don't want to have this experience anymore. Other things just keep showing up in different variations of a similar experience. And that's generally speaking, what we ask anybody the first time, they're like, well, I'm dealing with this. And we're like, is that new? That's a simple question. Anybody can ask themselves, is this new? And if the answer to that answer or, or the question, the answer to that question is no, like this is not new. You're looking at a pattern. You're looking at a strategy. You're looking at a defense inside of your system. You're looking at a subconscious part that has been trying to communicate something to your conscious mind, perhaps since you were a little boy or a little girl. And every single time, every single time that you 
avoid it. It's what like a Buddhist would call ignorance. Like like from Buddhist terminology is like this ignorance. And ignorance is like, it's like these layers that you keep putting on top of this part. It's like part, 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 part. And over a long period of time, we do this thousands of times, thousands of times. And the the what ends up happening is this part gets so deep under these layers. You know, in the beginning, it's like if someone's like, if rubble is on them, you know, a little bit of rubble and they're like, help, help. Like you might hear them. But if suddenly they're 30 feet underground and they're yelling, help, 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 like it's really, really tough to hear that. And the, the voice that's signaling becomes very faint. We had a mentor that once said, if you stand in, in sewage long enough, you stand in shit long enough, it stops smelling. And that's essentially what our strategies and patterns are. It's us standing in sewage so long that we no longer even recognize that we're in a part, that we're in a strategy. We've just been doing it forever. It's de facto. It's just there. It's a knee jerk reaction. And so we want to be able to, A, understand how's the mind looking at that and looking at it, looking at it differently, right? The reframing, the responsibility, integrity, pieces like that. And if you haven't done mindset work, that's where you want to get started. That's why you want to talk to our team so we can kind of figure out like, what have you done? What are you doing? What have you tried? Clearly not working if you're still talking to us, right? And then like, okay, great. So like, let's, like a doctor would tell you, hey, look, this is what's going on. We want to find the path, fastest path to get it from A to B. Now, A to B might still look a little bit like this, but here's what we know. If you do this and you do this and you recognize this, you realize that and you look over here, suddenly there's going to be this change in, oh, wow, I never looked at it that way. That's the beginning of the mind letting go of its preconceptions of how things are supposed to go. If you can't even do that to your programming, you can't separate your conscious mind from just seeing things. Oh, shit, there's just programs down there. There's just strategies down there. I, I got to learn how to lovingly approach these parts because being uh their their antithesis like like standing against them wanting to change them it's like just like you when somebody tells you stop that you're not like okay you dig in your heels and you do more of that shit where it's like the stubborn nature that lives in within us and so our parts are stubborn they literally believe that they are fighting for survival you know, like imagine if your dad was in front of you and there was like a car coming to get you like, you're like, and he was like going to stand in the way of that car to try to like push it out of the way. And you're like, dad, don't do that. Don't stand. Don't try to save me. Don't try to help me. Your father's gonna be like, you crazy. I love you. Of course I want to help you. Yeah. And so we want to recognize again that the conscious mind, we could call that the, the masculine mind, the conditioned mind. We could call it the doer. There's so many names. Is this part of you that's actively trying to create safety? but it's doing it with very, very, very outdated and programs that never worked in the beginning just to create safety. Maybe they just created like physical safety when something happened or emotional safety when this original trauma happened, but there was just one incident where that worked. <laughs> and the funny part is the mind will look at a single incident where there was a sense of relief or safety that came in in a moment that there was no relief and no safety. And then it will just re-trigger that response over and over again. It doesn't know that it's ended. And so we want to be able to signal to our biology that the threat is gone. And so for most of us, money, finances have created this threat response in our body. There's not enough. I'm not going to have safety. I'm not going to put food at the table. I'm not, I'm not this. I can't pay my bills, right? Like you can see how the system that we're in creates this like massive hyperactivity inside of our nervous system. And again, I've experienced it many, many times throughout my life where it does that. And it's like, what you got to get learn is that whatever that need is that's underneath, we want to be able to look and meet that need. And then your relationship with money, which is really just another energy frequency, right? Money is the energy of support. And when you open up your system to be able to receive support through these practices, money is just naturally arises and shows up when it needs to, right? Just like in nature, no animals waking up in the morning going, I hope, I hope I have a meal today. Right. Only humans do this shit where they're like, they don't know that they're going to be served today. Although we are part of this nature and this intelligence really can provide everything that you need for you whenever you need it. That's a pretty advanced way of living in a spiritual way. However, you can get there, certainly. And we're the only animal going like, oh, fuck, is, are, am I going to get what I need today? Mm -hmm. Because we live in a story that there's scarcity. We live and we've been fed this story that there's scarcity and not enough and competition. Da, 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 da but our world is highly abundant and, and energy is infinite in its abundance. So there's no lack of support available to you. Again, we want to look at the parts that don't believe that, help them get that need met so they can open up, relax and get that support. Yeah. And I just, you know, as guys sharing, I'd love to hear from you guys what, uh, 
I think I'm getting a bit of an echo. Let me... I can, uh, I'll meet up. Okay. I wasn't sure if it's me. Um, so as guys sharing, I'd just love for you guys to comment in the box, like how this is landing. Cause obviously the, the, what he's pointing to is probably a little bit different than what you may have heard. And I think where people mostly go around money and finances is, you know, let me learn how to manifest. Uh, let me go do law of attraction. How many of you guys have, have done that? Right. And you kind of start to go down that path. And I think what's worth re-highlighting that guy pointed out is that's all in the world of out here. Right. That's all in the world of I'm not OK with what is I need to change what is. And then you start to like manipulate or try to manipulate your environment. The problem with all of that is. If what is driving like the energetic pieces inside, if your nervous system is bound in a certain way, then it doesn't matter how hard you work out here. It doesn't matter how much you've been. Uh, trying to shift, you're going to keep creating more, better, different uh, results than you already have. And I think that's where the frustration comes. And then for most of you, my guess is you've invested time, energy, money in programs, courses, books, videos, etc. And you're still kind of dealing with very, very similar things. So, you know, to, to Guy's point about us being immigrants, right? It's not like our parents sat us down and said, hey, listen, this is how we view money. Right. The way we relate to money is pre-programmed as we're kids by what we see, by what we hear, by what we feel. And it's just all being programmed in. OK, and then we get older and we don't realize that those programs that we elicited when we were very, very young are still running the show. And I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day and I was saying, you know, like when someone is born into a super, super wealthy family, that kid will never struggle around money. And it's not because everything will be given to them or anything like that. It's just, they live in a world where money's not even a thing. Like money is always there, right? Like that's the programming. Money is just always there, always available. Like, they never think about it. You're an immigrant, right? And you come to a country where you don't know the language and your parents are working two to three jobs to try to make money. Like that's going to create a certain program. And Guy and I butted up against that many, many times as we were building our business. So those are all really, really important to note because if you're trying to work on like, I want to learn how to manifest or things things like that. You've probably heard us say this before, but you're manifesting all the time. Like you're currently right now watching this, you're manifesting. Every thought that you have, any energy that you have, any emotion that you have is, is all rippling through the universal cosmos and manifesting. You can't not manifest. That's why I find it very, very funny that people like read books about manifesting. It's like, show me how you stop manifesting. You're, do, you're doing it right this very second. What you're not doing is you're not consciously manifesting and you're not actually manifesting what it is that you actually want. And that happens because the way the mind works is it's always looking for danger. It's always looking for where you are not safe because that's, it's, that's what this machine does. And because of that, you keep getting a certain view of the world, of yourself, of others, of your circumstances, that's always skewed to the side of lack, always skewed to the side of danger, right? And not having money is a form of scarcity or danger, right? And so if you keep viewing the world from that reality, can you guys see how you're going to keep creating the same reality that you're in over and over and over? And so what we get to do is we actually get to create an entirely new paradigm shift. And the paradigm shift, I mean, like you guys can probably all tell me stories of why you have the money struggles that you have and what the programs were and when they got created and right. 
And that's great to know, but it doesn't really make the lasting difference. Because ultimately, the we talk about this a lot at our live event, by the way, um, which if you guys don't know, there is one coming up this weekend. So Saturday, Sunday is our uh, upcoming live event. And if you want uh, to still participate in that, uh, maybe I can drop the link in here, but you can just head over to intuitivemind.live and grab your ticket right away. Um, and we cover a lot of this on there, actually, what I'm about to share right now, which is how many of you guys uh, would say that you're much better at giving support than you are at receiving support? So how many of you guys would, would agree that I'm much better at giving support to others than receiving support? Okay. And something that has become abundantly clear to us is that money, the energy, right? Like, so money is a frequency, just like everything else in the world. Everything is an energy and a frequency. Money, the energy of money is the same energy as support. Okay, so some of you are saying, yep, totally much better at giving, better at giving. Yes, yes, definitely, right? So if we suck at receiving support, I'm not even talking about the fact of like asking for support. That's like a whole other thing, right? But like, even if we were to ask or support was to be given, we, we were much better at giving than it is receiving then I want you to, however that is, that's pretty much your conversation around money or your, your frequency around money. And so until we learn how to actually open pathways in our nervous system in order to receive and drink support, I want you to imagine that what's happening in here is like the arid desert that hasn't gotten water in a long, long time. And so there's very, very small pathways for you in order to receive that, that are there for you to receive support. And because of that, those same pathways are also restricting your ability to get money or receive money. And then we do things on top of that. But if that's the program running in the background, it's very, very difficult to feed it because the pathways that are there set to receive are gonna be blocked. And so at the live event, one of the things that we do, which is you know, money and abundance is a, is a beautiful byproduct of that work, is we actually go to the root cause. So we're no longer interested in like pruning the trees from up here. We're actually gonna go down to the roots. And we're gonna to start to work on the nervous system and the subconscious aspects of yourself that have been blocking you from receiving support. get that? This is really, really important. This is why you've probably been working at something really hard and not being able to produce results is because the mind has convinced you to look and work on something that is not the actual issue in the first place. How many of you guys feel stuck in the area of money? Like you really feel like you've put in a good amount of effort into doing this, but it just doesn't, it's like the, the dam just is not breaking. How many of you guys have that experience where it's like, oh, doesn't matter what I do, here I am again. It's frustrating, right? And then the frustration if you think about it, is where we take the action from. Can can you actually pause on the frustration for a second? Yeah. Let's just yeah. Let, let's just acknowledge frustration. Like you can actually sit with your frustration, and it's okay for you to feel frustrated. We can hold that here for you. Like it's gonna feel like this pit in your stomach, or like a squeezing in your solar plexus, or like a subtle pain in the back of your heart, or maybe even a constriction in your throat. And so just check, like. As we talk about this, because when we're naming stuff, our, our, our biology is responding to it subconsciously. This is a way for you to, by the way, to start bringing awareness to your subconscious 
awareness. Subconscious is not this idea or thought. It certainly can come as like inspiration and insight, but it's actually like a felt sense. It's a, it's a direct experience you're having inside of your body. This is your programming, by the way. Yeah. The, the higher mind, the, the lower mind, the less to say, the 10% mind that people talk about, like we only have 10% access. That's the one that's like out here and it's looking and it's just like this vigilant, you know, kind of hyperactive meth head <laughs> that's like trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. But like the body has this like patient reaction. And so like for a moment here, I'm actually going to be quiet. Like just feel frustration. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's a, it's an actual human trait. And in the witnessing here in this community of your frustration, something can change right now for you. Like we got you. We can feel it with you. We, Elon and I have trained to feel what's happening in the energetic field. We can feel your nervous system. We can actually feel you guys, this pain this anger this loathing and sadness that comes along with this like when is this fucking gonna change my god i've done everything what else do you want from me <sighs> until you can acknowledge I'm going to hand it right back to you, bro. But until you can acknowledge where you're at, you cannot get anywhere else. You will not get where you want to get to by avoiding it or trying to overcome it. Your quickest way out of the trap that you're in is to go through the experience that you're in. The first thing you got to learn is to set the mind aside and to permission the experience that you're having so your biology can take care of it because it knows how to do it. And that's really what the training is about is learning how to step aside and let the intelligence do the work. Go ahead, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's, that's the that's really, 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 really important, important piece here. here. Broski, can you just mute? Just mute. Mm -hmm. That's that piece. And and what Guy just pointed to, that frustration, that stuckness, that is what you keep trying to overstep. What you try to do is you try to throw information at it to convince it that it doesn't need to be frustrated. It doesn't need to be stuck. In fact, someone wrote here, spinning my wheels, but hopeful. And you go into the state of like, oh, I'm just gonna be hopeful. And Broski, maybe I know this is something that you've touched on quite a bit recently. So maybe you want to just talk about like your insights around hope, because I think it's really uh, important. So First thing to say, Elon wants me to talk about my hope experience, but there, I want to just name that there's nothing wrong with any human trait. Even having murderous rage for somebody, there's an appropriate time for that, right? There's, there's times where our traits are used out of a distortion, out of a pattern. And for most of us, by the way, it's where we live our lives. We live in the distortion of the pattern. Now, every energy, like any emotion that you've ever experienced, every energy in your body also has a gift side. It has something to provide. You know, for example, people who are hostile and angry on the distortion side and can cause a lot of emotional damage to themselves and other people uh, on the on the plus side of it, like on the when the energy is used for, I don't want to say good, but in the, in its gifts are highly influential, charismatic people who make incredible leaders. They're people who have excellent boundaries and know how to say no. And so if you're like a person who has no boundaries, I'm going to guess you don't have a lot of access to what we call fire energy, which is also your anger. And so there's a healthy amount of anger that we get to develop within our system because it's an appropriate response sometimes. No, that's called autonomy when you can do that. If you can't do that, you feel like you're being oppressed and you don't have autonomy. That sucks. So when I say this, we look at hope as a very um, optimistic trait and, and there is on the gift side, except when you when you track hope, like when I track hope in my system, what I ultimately realize is my system uses hope to backdoor disappointment. It's how my system tricks me. So I'm, I'm like an eternal optimist. I'm always hopeful things are going to work out, but it becomes a trap for me because it always lends itself to something being really disappointing. And then I go deep into a pattern when that happens. So if I can become aware of that, what I want to notice is not that quote unquote hope is bad. I want to look at it in my system, where is hope being derived from? What's the energy behind hope? 
because for me, it's always been like, it's going to work out, you know, like I'm going to like do this other thing and everything's going to be great. And then it's like, it doesn't work out because the energy doesn't allow for that thing to come through and oh, disappointment. And then I got to go through a much longer process. But if I'm aware, I'm like, oh, there's hope here now. And then I got to check the hope. Where is that hope coming from? Is that coming from a part or is that coming because I'm in a neutral state and hope just arose as an experience? And now I just, there's this like genuine feeling of hope. Or am I generating the hope to try to get through this because I'm actually in a negative state and I'm overlaying it with hope to make it look like it's not so bad, which really is just a way of saying it's going to be like this while I convince myself of this bullshit until I'm like, this is devastating. I'm fucking really disappointed. And so we really want to check because most people, when they're, you talk to them about their quote unquote problems in their lives, whatever, again, we don't have problems. We have patterns. Write that quote down. <laughs> We don't have problems. We have patterns. And so we want to recognize where does this pattern lead? Oh, I know this road already. Then maybe I shouldn't do it this time. Okay, great. Well, if I'm not going to do that, then what am I going to do? Here's the answer. Don't do anything. You don't have to figure out the next thing to do. What you got to figure out is how to stop doing anything at all and and generate a response within yourself that we call open curiosity. People who suffer are people who stopped being curious a long time ago. They know how the world is. They are fixed. People in their life are fixed. Politics is fixed. Economics is fixed. There's just a way that it is. And you are just a pawn in the game and you go along with that way that it is. But it's not the way that it is. That's the way that you perceived that it is based on your strategies and patterns that you developed before you had language before you can decide for yourself, before you had logic of any kind or can deduce, all those patterns are in there. All those patterns are in there. I've been saying this a lot recently. I have a four-year-old at home. He's not going to remember probably the first zero to four years of his life, but I've been here been for 48 months. A lot of life has happened. A lot of life has happened and his patterns are in. Like he's going to develop more of them, but like the fun, the fundamentals, the foundation of who my child is, it's already done. He's not going to remember that it's because this or that or the other happened. And that's going to shape his worldview, his relationships, his, his view on politics, his view on economics, his view on every stupid engendered thing that they throw at us that says, hey, this is important for you to care about right now. When it's like a week ago, you didn't even care about that until they told you that you you're supposed to care about that. And he's going to need support around things that make him feel like he's less of something or that he can't have that human experience. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to be locked into those experiences until that need is met. Hands down. Hunger does not go away until it's satiated. You guys get that? Like if you don't eat food, the hunger doesn't go away until you eat food. <laughs> Something has to come into the body to bringing energy to metabolize what's going on inside the body. And the body's like, okay, now I'm safe again. Right? Most of us never even get to that point because we just eat all the goddamn time. We don't even know what it's like to feel hungry. And something magical can happen, by the way, in hunger. P.S. A lot of magical stuff can happen while you're hungry. Those used to be a very common things that humans experienced. It's an important part of their spirituality, in fact. So we want to, this is why programs like these matter. Because truth be told, Elon and me included, 20 years of doing work, we always have a coach and a mentor. Why? Because we can't see our own stuff. When you're so close to the programming, it is just the way the world is to you. Until someone points out, it, it's like, there is also this other way, <laughs> you know, that all these other people are doing it. And they seem to be getting amazing results with that perception. You want to test that one out? You want to do these practices? You want to bring awareness to it? Uh-huh. Right? And, and slowly but surely, as you bring awareness to these different layers, you're going to realize that the issues, right, really strategies and patterns that I have, have much deeper layers than how I've assessed them to be. Because the other thing the mind does is it creates a program and then it, it convinces you, A, that it's not the one doing it and B, that you need to avoid it. It does the, like, right? You guys have all heard the line. Einstein said, you cannot create a solution with the same level of mind, with the same consciousness that created the problem. And that's really what everyone's doing is they're trying to take that same level of consciousness and go and figure it out. And the consciousness is like, I don't want to. I'm good where I'm at. This is how we create safety. This is how we create you know, this, that, this is how we create comfort. This is how we avoid. This is how we blah, 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 blah. Right. And if like it, and if that's, and if that's where you're at and you're good with it, then you're fine. Then be that way. And honestly, our group is irrelevant for you. 
but for whatever reason, you clicked on something, you joined our group and the, and the interest you probably have is, well, how do I stop that stuff? How do I, how do I move beyond that and actually become the person that I deeply resonate with and I can feel inside that there's more potential in here, but I don't know how to un unlock it. Well, what's, o what's overlaid over that potential is all the ego and identity and patterns and structures that you've subconsciously put on yourself. And that is running the show. I guarantee you that's what's running the show. So it's imperative to bring awareness to that. It's imperative. You will not, I, I really want to emphasize this. You will not change your financial life. You will not change your relationships. You will not change your health by doing more. There's some evidence for that in our reality, like working really hard gets you there, but there's a lot more evidence that people that work really hard never manifest what they want at all. It is the exception, not the rule, that working hard gets you what you want. Because again, what's working hard is that strategy, that pattern, and that perception. And it only knows that world and it will only create more of that world by working hard, which ultimately just becomes a bigger prison. It's the illusion. The walls are still there, but you're just in a, a slightly bigger prison than you were in before. So it feels a little bit roomier until you once again meet the wall and you're like, shit, I'm still in that fucking prison. And so like we want to remove the walls of the prison for you. We want to help you get to a place in your life where, by the way, Elon and I don't do the work. It's not us. We're just pointing at stuff for you that people have pointed for us for 20 years. And what happens is when you point at that stuff to someone's awareness, it elicits a response in their awareness that leads to a breakthrough. Hands down. That's just what it does. And so that's what we want to help you guys do. You know, the two day live event today, but uh, this weekend is probably the most cost effective way for anybody to come get training from us. Like you cannot get training from Elon and myself until you join our level two work, like to get direct coaching from us. That's a $7,500 program. Okay. At level one, it's all recorded training and you work with one of our coaches. Uh, in case you're wondering, that's about a thousand dollar program. And our intuitive mind is a $444 program for 10 hours of coaching with Elon and myself, just to give you some relativity, right? And again, this is just the value that we bring to people's lives that can agitate you. It cannot agitate. You got to deal with whatever me saying this brings up for you. And it's going to bring up different things to different people. For some people, it's going to invoke curiosity. How do they do that? For other people, it's going to invoke anger because they shouldn't do that, right? Whatever it is. And that's fine. How, whatever it invokes, it invokes. We can hold it. It's fine. But you got to realize what's being invoked is a strategy and a pattern. So watch it as I say this. Okay. Elena and I charge $1,500 an hour for our coaching. That's what, that's what we have, believe currently that we're worth. It's going to be more in the future. But where we're at right now, it's $3,000 a month. You get two hours of coaching from us. It's $1,500 an hour. Okay. And that for us, and trust me, what we offer people is way more valuable than that in terms of the return on investment they get in terms of the quality of their life and relationships, health and their businesses. Right. Again, that can anger you, that could excite you. That could be a lot of different things that happens for people. So the reason I'm saying that is if you want some of this training, you can get 10 hours of coaching from us for $444 this weekend. It's the best deal we got. <laughs> I always find it funny, funny. you know, like, these conversations. <clears throat> I find it funny that um, every time we mention numbers or costs on one of these calls, the responses that we get, you know, like we have a team that people communicate with and all that stuff. And it's like, it always brings stuff up for people. And it's really good for you to actually see and deal with what's coming up for people because this is a really, really good pointer to where you're stuck. Because whatever came up around whatever number you got attached to or whatever you heard is where your resistance and contraction is in your system. The things that you're hearing, the things that it's telling you right now are a response to the constriction in your body. So if you hear a number like $1,500 an hour and that creates upset or rage or disappointment or whatever it might be, I'm inviting you to start noticing that. That's where your work lies. 
And someone asked me the other day, they're like, you know, why do you charge as much as you do for your programs? And I said, the beauty is that we have programs at every single price point for people, like every single price point, right? From $444, our programs go all the way to $30,000, dollars $50,000. Okay, that's a big range. And we're aware that different people have different places that they're at in life. Something that I learned a long time ago, people pay to pay attention. You give things to pe for people. You give things to people for free. They treat it like free. Someone invests in themselves. They're going to treat it at the same level that they invest in self. Now, some of you are sitting there and going, "No, no, 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 no!" Like if you gave this stuff to me free, like I'm going to be different. I'm going to actually pay attention, and I'm going to tell you, "No, you're not." And this is not a knock on you. This is just. This is how human beings operate. You know, for, for a millionaire, right? Like someone who's not really worried about money. If I offered them a coaching program that was $444, get, what do you guys think their response to that program would be? So they're, they're making millions. And I say, hey, I have this amazing two-day program. It's $444. What do you think their response to that program is going to be? They're going to be like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Their response is probably like, why would I fucking invest 400? Like, that's not even like, what could you possibly offer for $444? Yeah. Michael says too cheap, not worth it. Right. So you got to get like wherever you are on the spectrum and whatever you're experiencing right now about the, the money that, you know, the numbers that we're throwing out. That's your stuff. And until you get that stuff handled, you're just going to keep being stuck where you're at. And one of the biggest, biggest lessons I learned early, luckily, early, early on in my life, I was maybe 21, 22 at the time, uh, maybe a little bit older, 22, 23. was that you can think about this stuff all you want. You can read about this stuff all you want. And similar to relationships, when do we grow in relationships? When we're reading about relationships or when we're in relationships? Right? Like when, when do you learn more? And there's a huge difference between standing on the sidelines, looking out at other people, right? Like looking at other people playing the game and you getting on the court and playing in the game. And in order to get on the court and play the game, this is what I learned. You have to take decisive action. And I shared something like this in, in, the, in, in one of the sessions, which is like at every moment, like moment by moment by moment, there's two sides of you. There's more, but let's just simplify it. There's two sides of you. There's the voice in your head trying to convince you to stay put, stay safe. And it'll use every trick in the book that it knows that it will make you work. Every trick in the book. It's too much. It's too little. It's too scary. Uh, it won't work. Uh, you got screwed before. Why would this be different? Like it, it, whatever, whatever buttons it knows that keep you here, that's what it's going to use. How many of you guys can call out some of the buttons? I'm just very curious. Like if you guys have enough awareness around your buttons, like what are the things that you know shut you down? What's the, the excuses that the mind sends to you that you buy into hook, line, and sinker every single time? These are excellent to know. I just want to say, P.S. It could also, these could be physical. Like your body, your body might use exhaustion to keep mm -hmm. you away from stuff. It might use pain or headaches, or, you know, all sorts of different stuff like that. So, you know, it could be mental for sure. But generally speaking, by the time we get to mental, it's an associated sensation in the body that the mind is giving some meaning to and developing a story around 
And of course, it always comes up with the best story to convince you that it's true. And it's always aligned with all the other perceptions, right? And this is why transformation works, by the way, because it's like, you know, you guys know when you have an arch, archway, and the stone that's right over here is called the keystone. Transformation is like looking at the keystone going, okay, and pulling that out. And then the whole archway falls. Because if you can, if you can show the mind that something it believes it's not, tr that it believes with certainty is true, and you can absolutely definitively show the mind that it is not true, whether that perception goes away completely, and absolutely this work can do that for you, then that immediately throws shade at everything else that the mind is creating. Because we're all living in this fabricated reality within ourselves that says, I know this with certainty. Okay, but if one thing is not certain, then the rest of it is not certain either. In the moment, and this is what open curiosity is, it's living in a state of uncertainty, which might feel kind of alarming in the beginning. Because you're like, what? I want certainty, I want control, right? I want all these things. Okay, you can have them, but then you're going to have the life that you have right now. You can have the illusion of control and certainty, but you're going to have the small little life or this upset that you carry around with you or these relationships that don't work or this health that is always a challenge or the money that never quite comes. And that's what you'll have in this illusion of control. Or you can give that up and take a leap of faith and see what sits on the other side, which is generally speaking in our experience of doing this work for 20 years, always, 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 always a better result for people. Always. Always. Sorry, bro. Yeah, no worries. Just mute. Yeah, so there's some really, really good responses. I'm, I'm very, very proud of you guys for, for sharing this. So Megan says, burnout, overcommitment, procrastination. So this is like, you know, if I was to name this, I'm going to try to generalize and put them in an umbrella. So that's like, there's too much happening. Like there's too much going on in my life, right? It's So this conversation constantly like too much, too much, too much. So there's this constant feeling for Megan of overwhelm. So when, when Megan, for example, and I'll work through these like kind of individually so you get it. So when Megan feels that she's called to something, right? Like her system internally is going to be like, no, 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 this is too much. We can't commit to this. And that's going to have her pull back, right? She's going to buy that and that's going to have her pull back. Um, Caroline says, you can't trust them. Everyone will lie and hurt. And, and something as I'm going this, like I want to offer notice that none of these are new, right? Like we're having this conversation, but all of these programs were created when you were ye big, like they've been around for a very, very long time running your life. Like the life you have has been run by that, by that part, right? So when you don't trust someone, it's like, I want to take action. And then that, you know, the system hits the red buttons, like, no, no, you can't trust them. They're going to hurt you. And that pushes you back into your seat, right? Then there's another one is, uh, hold on. I lost a few in here. Scroll back up. Yeah, the next one was like distraction, shiny object, mind saying there's a better way. So it's like, it gets you frazzled. So it'll be like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And then there's so many things and you don't take any action because there's always like, okay, well, can I really trust that this is the right thing? Why don't I check, just take a look and check out all these other things? And now you notice now again, you're feeling pushed back in your seat, right? Feeling tired, scarcity, lack of security, all of those things that we spoke about, right? Again, trust in the universe, same, same exact thing, right? And so what I want you to get is that at any given moment, and right now could be one of those moments for you, you have a choice. And that choice is, do I buy that story? This is what your mind knows. This is how it can control you. That's all it is. It's a control tactic. It's not a reality. It's just you've believed it for so long that it has become your reality because you keep feeding this story and you keep buying it. What I mean by getting on the court is, that keeps you on the sidelines, okay? Getting on the court is like, you know what? I feel, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this go for a second. And then you start to feel into your body and you start to really notice like, what feels like a yes or a no? And I was just at this beautiful weekend uh, training and we were listening to this amazing man 
from Alaska. He, he's grown up in Alaska and uh, in a very, very unique culture. Like I can tell you stories and to no end about it. And one of the things that uh, he spoke about was this notion that the heart never lies. And that if you can start to actually listen to the heart, it will always lead you down to the most magical paths constantly. What's in the way of that, though, is this button, the mind's button that has control over you. And the mind was never supposed to be the thing that is leading your life. The heart was the one that was supposed to be guiding your life. But the mind has convinced you that it knows what's best for you and that it can take you to where you need to be and you can't listen to anybody else. And what we get to do through these practices is, and those that are, you know, have, have been with us for a long time will definitely attest to this. It's like you're giving control back to the true leader of your heart, of your life, which is your heart. Now it speaks in a very low note in comparison to the loudness of your mind. And so whether it's, you know, this weekend program or any of our other programs or something that's showing up in your life as an opportunity to maybe start a relationship, get out of a relationship, buy a home, sell a home, move here, move there, um, start a business, end a business, whatever it might be, right? Like, there's this constant internal battle. And what I want you guys to get is it's always going through the same filter that you just mentioned. It's a relationship. Oh, I don't know if I trust that person. Oh, I don't know if I have time for this relationship. What if they hurt me? Right? Notice the same conversations and it's constantly controlling your everything in your life. And so if we can actually learn to listen to our heart's true desire, which is connected to our soul's true desire, and we take action towards that, instead of listening to the loud mind and all its premeditated things that it sends to you, that's how you start to shift your life. And so the invitation is now and forever to listen deeply to what feels like a resonant yes. And you're going to feel this like tug. I, to me, it feels like a tug at the heart. It's like my heart opens and there's this like tug that just gently pulls me forward. It's not a pushing. It's not a, it's just this gentle pulling that I've learned to listen to. And when it pulls me towards that, listen, this is how I ended up moving and selling everything that I owned in a span of four months and moving from New York to Florida. It made no logical sense to me. But something inside of me resonated and said, yes. And I said, you know what, universe? I'm going to trust you on this. And in that moment, Fanny and I, my wife, put down a $10,000 deposit on a home to, build, to be built that we honestly didn't even know if we could sell our home, if Fanny's job can like allow her to work remotely, where we would put our kids. We'd never even been in the town that I moved into. Like I've never even seen the city of it. But something was so resonant it just said yes here now and i was like what do you mean yes here now like the, what are you talking about i just built my dream kitchen back home you want me to move now it was like yes here now and we put it and i said you know what universe i'm going to take this leap with you and if i'm meant to be here i want you to show me the easiest way to make it here and it did it rolled out the goddamn red carpet every step of the way one of my best friends from home helped me sell my house um uh, Fanny's work, gave her the, go the green light, like all these things. But none of that happens if you're sitting on the sideline trying to plan. If I sat on the sidelines, it was like, you know what? Let me go back and think about this and really map this out and see like who we would do this. None of this would have happened. None. Zero. So it's these momentary like sliding door things that either your mind's going to win or your heart's going to win. And once you start following the path of the heart, all the abundance that you want in your life, all the opportunities, all the connections, all the everything will show itself to you, but it will never show itself to you 
by you sitting there and waiting for the perfect moment and opportunity. There is never going to be a perfect moment. There's never going to be the perfect amount of money. There's never going to be the perfect amount of time. There's never going to be this magical opening in your life where it's like, oh, hey, you know, now I'm ready. You'll never be ready. It's always going to be an inopportune time. Guy and I are in a two-year program. You know, like we got to try, we get to travel eight times a year to different places in the world. You're telling me that there's like a great time to leave my family and pause our business for a bunch of days. And like, there's never a good time. This time just so happened that, you know, where I traveled got like a foot to three feet of snow while I was there. Do you, do you think my mind was like, oh yeah, let's do this. My mind was like, why would you go there? This is stupid. You're going to get snow. You're going to get stuck. Why do you go? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And so I kept listening deeply to my heart. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. And I'm so, so happy that I did. So the invitation is like, you get to listen and take action. If you don't take action from the listening, the heart keeps getting quieter and quieter. And it will just stop communicating with you. Because you keep feeding this other voice. So that's the one that takes over. You're muted. I say there's like an indigenous story of like the, the black wolf or the white wolf. And it's like mm-hmm. whatever wolf you feed is the one that grows, right? So it's like, and then just to clarify, Elon is not saying you need to put your, your mind, or your heart at odds with one another because that doesn't work either. You want to create congruence between the two. We need to start recognizing that what we call the mind is really a mind-body connection. Yeah. I say, this all, I say this all the time now, but science has figured out what spirituality has always known is that you have neurons in your heart, same neurons you have in your brain, you have them in your heart. Same neurons you have in your brain, you also have in your stomach. There's this thing called the solar plexus that's right below your heart center and heart chakra. And this is literally the place where all the nerve endings in the body come together and then go out. And a lot of people, me included, feel a lot of pressure in this area in my body because it's overstressed and the energy doesn't flow in the body easily. And this is a lot of times where we start getting into anxiety and fear and terror and stuff like that. And so like we want to recognize that you have this nervous system. The nervous system is one mind. Your awareness is, is, is another element of that that can watch this whole mind, right? And that's how we train you guys to like sit back and like watch. Whoa, holy crap. I can actually watch all this unfolding. That's insane. And you start recognizing that this identity, ego, all this kind of stuff is really like watching a movie or a video game. And you get to train yourself to be able to stay back. Because most of you guys, like what Elon is saying is, here's a simple way of saying it. You're the subject in your life. And until you have an objective witnessing of that subject, you're always going to do what the subject wants to do. That's what the mind does. It's this trick. You're so close to the programs. You don't even know you're running programs. It just is the way that it is. It is the way that I am. These fixed ways of being. And nothing is like that. Nothing at all is like that. Nothing at all is like that. Elon was saying uh, we had this uh, indigenous man we got to listen to from Alaska. And listening to how he was raised already sounded like the new earth. You know, like This is how we, kind of the vision that many of us have of, of what it could be. And um, I had a point about that, but now I can't recall um yeah anyway i can't remember what i was going to say about that but really with this with this witnessing uh it elicits this unbelievable healing response within us it gets rid of the constriction in the in the body it gets rid it adds flow to this energetic field that we live in and really anywhere you're stuck is really just saying stuck energy that's all trauma is if you're stuck, there's stuck energy. What happens when you move the energy again? Your body just responds completely different. And so we really want to begin to create coherence that there's not just a mind that speaks. There is a heart that feels. There is a stomach that in, has an intuition, right? And that's like the kind of language of the dif- these different systems. So linguistics, emotion, right? And the heart and then like gut instincts like this. It, it, it just I just know that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I could feel it in my guts. Like we use... This in our language, right? I followed my heart. Oh, I just, I, I just felt that I knew I was supposed to do that. That comes from the stomach. And then the mind has all the opinions about that, that either will draw you into that or draw you away from that. But we all have had those experiences in the moments where we let it go and we don't do the rational thing and magic and serendipity enters our life. We want to help you find that space. So that is the way that you live your life. It stops becoming a one-off experience and you start realizing, oh, I could create that all the time. It's just a matter of kind of helping the mind to ease itself and wean itself off of these addictions that it has that don't allow for this energy flow to come into our lives. So uh, just because of of time purposes, I want to begin wrapping up. But again, if you're not already in the intuitive mind for this weekend, 
uh, I would say, and you want to be there, register as soon as possible because we send you six hours of pre-training before you get there and that will juice up your entire experience. It's totally fine if you don't go through that training, the two days are standalone. However, if you want to extract even more value from it, that's why we give it to you. So you kind of like, you can prepare yourself and do like the initial work and then step into it. And you'll be much more knowledgeable with what, what it is that we're going to bring through. Um, we'd love to have you there. It's one of our favorite things to do. It's a great way for us to meet a lot of new people in the community and see your faces and feel your energy. And when you start realizing the, uh, the power of a group field, for us, that's it's, it's life-changing to recognize that you don't have to go on this path alone. And if you really talk to our consultants, which by the way, you can do by just clicking on that link above, soulsandseekers.com uh, forward slash messenger, that will lead you over to our, our messenger. We'll ask you a few questions and then a, a real person will be there to respond to you and ask you any, um, to answer any of your questions. And if you do that, they can help you recognize like, hey, we've already built all these systems. Elon and I have already made all the mistakes for you. You know, we, again, we've been doing this for 20 years. We've built many programs. We have, we've developed many seven figure pro, uh, companies over the last 11 years. This is just its latest iteration, right? And so all these things are important about your personal healing and then you're healing with other people and you're healing at the level of group. We've already created all that for you, all the support systems, all the programming, so all the work that you would need to do. You don't have to go out there and be like, I wonder how this all works. How do I figure this all out? You don't have to go bootstrap it and tape it all together with masking tape and watch 20 different YouTube videos and try to like figure out how this all works. We've created a path for you that if you follow this journey, your life is going to change. Yeah. I guarantee it. There's, there's no way to do this work and not have it turn out. It's not possible because it's, we're not pulling stuff out of our, our butts and be like, Oh, this is interesting. This is tested and proven stuff over a 20 year period. And these are universal truths that apply to everybody at the spiritual and fundamental level of what it means to be a human being. And if you learn this stuff, I'm telling you, it is impossible that your life will not change, that your life will not transform. And so I really want to tell you this, you know, you see the, you buy stuff and for liability purposes, they put these results are not typical on the bottom. That's not the case here. Our results are typical. Our res look at me. <laughs> the results are typical. We've, we've done this with so many people. Now, granted, some people suffer through it. Some people challenge through <laughs> it. Some people breeze through it. There's all sorts of ways that people go through it. Because when you look in the places within yourself that you've spent a lifetime of avoiding, that's going to bring some shit up. To, that's going to bring some stuff up. You got to know that going in. It's a roller coaster ride. It's not always, oh my God, this is fabulous. You know, the best experience of my entire life. I feel ecstatic, although that happens to most people eventually in time when they move past the patterns and strategies that they've used their whole life. They're like, I had no idea this was on the opposite end of that. I had no idea I can feel this good, this connected, this healthy, you know, this powerful, this self-expressed, this grounded, this safe, this much well-being. No idea. Human beings learn through contrast. We learn through relativity. When you are stuck in a pattern and a way of being your entire life, you have no idea what well-being feels like yet. You have no idea what safety feels like yet. And I want to let you know that getting a glimpse and a taste of that, just a little bit, an appetizer, an aperitif, is enough to let your mind go, oh my God, I had no idea. Because now your relativity changes dramatically. You're like, I can go there? Now I want to know how to stabilize that. I've tasted it now. I want to know how to go cook that meal every fucking day. I want to know how to live in that place every day. And that's the difference between, again, just beginning to practice this work, like coming to a two-day live event is practicing this work, which is fine if that's where you want to be. Or a person who's like, I want to master this kind of work because I recognize that by mastering my mind, and I'm talking about body-mind connection, by mastering healing, by mastering my relationships, my health, these are fundamentally, biologically, spiritually incredibly important things to each and every one of us. You, if you are telling me those things are not important to you, to you, you're lying. You're lying. I know, I know for a fact that that's important to your biology. That's what creates a healthy human, empowered human, a self-expressed human. And we have no education of, of this. Unless you grew up in like a Buddhist monastery, you're effed. You, you have some, you know, history and math and science and you're like, cool. No, nothing of that nature is adding real value and quality to your life. You come learn this stuff, I promise you, you are gonna to escalate to places unfathomable, unfathomable to most people. So that's the invitation, guys. So again, I'll put the, uh, 
the QR code for you guys here, but you can also go to intuitivemind.live if that's what suits you better. If you just wanna have a conversation about this or any of our other programs, um, we really welcome you to do that. There is nothing at, you know, a cost for you except for your time to explore. We have three incredible people that we get to talk to on a weekly basis and train them how to have real connected conversations with you guys. So they're not just hucking a product at you, but really seeing you where you're at and connecting with you and saying like, hey, look, this is actually gonna help you. We wanna give you the confidence to take that uncomfortable step into the unknown. And we know that when you look at a program that's gonna have you look at parts that have you've avoided subconsciously most of your life, that there's something's gotta come up in the system. Some people feel excitement. They're like, I can't wait to take these chains off. And other people are like, all I know are these chains. And it's actually kind of scary to think about taking them off. And that's the point of these conversations. It needs to make sense for you. You need to be excited. You need to come into it with your own volition. Even if it, the excitement is I'm a little bit worried and scared about what I might see when I actually take a good look. We get that. And trust me, when you're with people who've done this work for so long, there's pretty much nothing Elon and I haven't seen in a 20 year period. You can imagine from the worst mm -hmm. to the best of, of humanity, right? And so like, we're very confident that we can help you work through any area of life because it's not like you're more broken than the worst person we've ever seen, right? Or, or <laughs> beyond repair, like there's no such thing, right? It's just patterns. It's just patterns. You're not, you don't have a problem, you have patterns. So when you have people next to you, guiding you through those experiences, you look at it from a different place. You experience it from a different place. Your confidence grows tremendously in your ability to face these dark corners of your consciousness. And I've been saying this for, for the last few weeks, it is a lot more confidence inspiring to walk into a dark cave holding someone's hand than it is to do it by yourself. But most of us are trying to walk into that dark cave by ourselves and it's terrifying. And we do the little turtle head poke, we're like, mm, no, I'm good. Back into the pattern, back to what I know, back to what the subconscious is, but then life doesn't change. You get different variations of the same things you've had before. So this is, this is a major opportunity for most of you guys to come get a taste, a glimpse. These two day events are life altering for people. Please go watch the testimonials on the Intuitive Mind live page. They are, even I watch them, I'm like, damn, that's amazing. And that's just two days, okay? So get the taste, then imagine what's really available when you bring this to your life and it's just the way that it is. It's just the way that you live your life, no matter what's showing up. We love you all. Thank you for your time and attention. We will see you back here next week. Peace out. Bye,